My name is Samantha Sun, and I am a student researcher at the University of Washington. I'm also part of the UW Center for Neurotechnology. So I'm interested in the brain because it basically controls everything that we do, like playing sports or learning a new subject in school. My research is about understanding the brain and our sense of touch. So when I pick up this water bottle, the nerves in my hand is sending a signal all the way to my brain, telling me things like the texture or the weight of this water bottle and allows me to pick it up and gently place it down. I'm working on a project that can help people who have lost their sense of touch by using electricity to directly activate the brain region that controls our sense of touch. I'm excited today to answer some brain questions that we've received from students around Washington. One question we received is, what are inside the pink fleshy wrinkly parts? So the pink parts is brain tissue, which is made of hundreds of thousands of neurons. The reason why our brain is wrinkly is because over time, our brains have gotten too big for our heads. So to fit it all in, it has to fold up a lot. Some animals don't have wrinkly brains, such as mice and koalas, since theirs already fits nicely into their heads. Rosie, a second grader from Spirit Ridge Elementary asks, does enough sleep help the brain? The answer is yes. Sleep is very helpful for the brain and it's important to get enough sleep since it helps you remember things that you learned while you were awake. During sleep, your brain also does sort of a cleanup. So it removes cell waste and other things that might've built up during the day. A second grader from Spirit Ridge Elementary asks, how much do neuroscientists get paid? So I looked up the salaries for neuroscientists in Seattle, and it looks like they're paid between $70,000 to $170,000 a year. Annie, a fifth grader from Montessori Center School asks, does anybody actually have brain-related superpowers? There are actually some rare brain conditions that could be similar to having superpowers. One is called hyperthymesia, where people are able to remember almost every single life event in very vivid detail. Another one is called synesthesia, where you can experience kind of like a mixing of senses. So the most common type is when you look at letters of the alphabet or numbers, they might have a color associated with them. Some of them, um, some people will say that there's kind of a tinge or shade of color, even though the actual color might be like black. Another fifth grader from Montessori asks, is it true that if you tap your head, you lose intelligence? So tapping your head probably won't cause any harm to you, but if you do hit your head hard enough, it might cause something called a concussion, which isn't a good thing. It can potentially affect how well your brain is able to work, so that's why wearing helmets is so important. A fourth grader from Holy Rosary asks, why is it important to keep your brain hydrated with water? Water helps carry nutrients and important molecules and other building blocks to and from different parts of the body, including the brain. So when you are dehydrated or when you aren't getting enough water, this process of carrying nutrients throughout your body can slow down and may start causing problems. Another fourth grader from Holy Rosary asks, if you lost a lobe of your brain, could you survive? So there are actually very rare cases where children will get half of their brain removed because that part of the brain was causing them to have very large seizures. Um, amazingly, these children grew up just fine because the brain has this incredible ability to adapt.